Hey, what is going on everyone? My name is Alpha and today we are back with another Pokemon challenge video. Today we are on Pokemon Emerald and today's challenge will be a bit difficult. Can I beat Pokemon Emerald using only Curse? Now, Curse is an interesting move based on what typing you are. Uh, it's going to have different effects. If you are not a ghost type, it will raise your attack and defense and lowers your speed. However, if you're a ghost type, it will inflict a passive status on you that continuously take HP from the target. But also, it cuts your HP in half. So, you know, it's a, it's an interesting move. So, we're going to try to beat that using the ghost version of the move. And to start, obviously, I want to preface that I did spawn in six different uh, ghastlies that all know curse. That's the only thing they know, so you can't use any other move to cheat around, to like skip around some gym leaders or trainers at all. So that's obviously the main point of that. Also, PP is not a real... PP will never really be a uh, big defactor for this because you're obviously cutting your HP most of the time. And another rule set is I'm allowing HM slaves because I need HMs to beat the game. So obviously, HM slaves are required. And obviously, I can evolve the Pokemon... I just have to use curse the only move i can use is curse now that's the rule set and all the rules explained i want to ask you guys if you guys can leave a like comment down below some challenge ideas and subscribe if you guys are not already this challenge came from the comments so obviously i pick comments from the comment section when i can also turn on the post notification bell because i upload two times a week on wednesday and saturday get live updates when those videos are posted so anyways let's get back into the challenge as you can see in the starting areas, it's pretty easy because most of them only know normal type moves and I'm a ghost type, so I have the advantage there. However, going into Rustboro City, there is a big, big factor. I may have six Pokemon right now that all know Curse. However, they're all very weak and they're all Ghastlies. Ghastlies have horrendous defense. Like the Ghastly line has horrendous defense and there's not much that we can do. So. What we actually have to do is actually drop off some of the Ghastlies we spawned in. A full team of Ghastlies, full team of Curse, sounds like not too bad, right? But we actually need to play around with some HP balances. So we went out and caught a Shroomish and a Poochiana. Obviously, we had to train them up and we had to train them up using Curse and then switching back and forth. But once we get through that, we got a reasonable level on them. We're going to actually head into the gym and use curse on the geodude and then switch out and go into our shroomish or a Pugiana to take hits for us we're not using those pokemon for move sets we're using them for their hp bars and their defense capabilities so that is why we're using them as i explained the rules the only move i can use is curse i didn't say the only pokemon i could use is ghastly because i had a full team Obviously, I can't really beat the game with only one Ghastly because it cuts my HP in half. And also, you know, no other move is being used. However, I have other Pokemon that are not Ghastly and do not have Curse in their moveset. I just don't use the other moves. However that may be, we actually head into Brawly's gym and this is the easiest time. The easiest way to beat Brawly. Just have a Ghost type. He can't do anything against Ghost types. He's, he is panicking when I'm using my Ghastlies in this gym loop. And I'm completely fine with it because Brawly is one of the harder gym leaders in the game, in any mainline series Pokemon game. Now we're in Mobile City and we're heading into the Electric Gym. Most of our Pokemon are not that good. Um, our My we got a Mightyana, which is cool. It has Intimidate, so that's going to be on the team more because it obviously lowers the attack stat of, of the opposing Pokemon. However, we actually lose to Watson our first attempt, so we got to retry and... This retry obviously pans out better because we end up beating him. We're using our newly acquired Haunter. You know, Haunter is, is obviously the last stage we can get because we can't trade our Ghastlies. It would be better if we could trade, but we can't. So we're going to stick with Haunters. I'm not too sure why I didn't choose the other ghost types in this region. Maybe I just have an affinity for <laughs> Ghastlies. Ghastly line is just, I guess, one of my favorite lines. So I, I, I automatically assumed Curse. Ghost type ghastly, so uh, that's how my brain works. Speaking of that, we are preparing for the long haul. We're going out of our way to catch this random Skarmory in the well. We actually took a long time trying to find the Skarmory, but we end up getting the Skarmory and we're going to put it on a team. Not exactly now because the fire gym is coming up, but it's going to be on the team eventually because it's incredibly defensive, so it's perfect for the team for a bit. The next gym leader, Flannery, actually ends up giving us a lot of <laughs> trouble. Uh, we end up losing. 
to Flannery and we're blacking out. So we had to come back a bit stronger. We actually trained up a Pelipper for this gym and it took a lot more hits for us. And eventually, for some reason, Torko just missed a bunch of overheats at the end. And we actually stole a win from Flannery, which I'm not complaining. I mean, it just started missing and I was like, okay, whatever, Torko misses. Torko is really choking out here and we took the we actually stole that badge. There's no way Haunter should have been able to clutch that up. Now it comes a bit easier. We're heading into Norman's gym, but here comes more of a strategizing thing. Cause now we have to begin to strategize for the gym fights. Cause Norman's gym is obviously there is ghost types, however, he does have dark moves and moves that could hit my haunters. I have to switch in between certain Pokemon to obviously avoid getting hit by it but luckily if i do switch out i can switch back into the haunters because they will attack what's in front of them or target what's in front of them so they'll probably use a normal move that turn so i switch into haunter and i avoid any damage so that's a pretty easy thing it's going to happen more so later down the line but it's starting now the predicting plays or i'll play in the ai essentially we secure some citrus berry that I end up not using for the entire game. I don't know. I, I just completely forgot about the citrus berry, but they could have been useful. I don't know why I didn't use them. As well, we got the good rod and I caught a Carvana. I trained it up to a Sharpedo, so I have a Sharpedo with rough skin. So it, if anything touches it, it does some damage. I mean, just a heads up play, you know. I'm not, do, I'm not actually attacking anyone. I'm just using my environment. It doesn't matter anyways, because I have my Skarmory. I trained it up and I cursed down all Winona's Pokemon. All Winona, Winona's going down, and we have Skarmory to obviously, you know, protect us from everything. The minimum requirement for a team is at least two Haunters, but I always play with three Haunters. Obviously, things can happen. It's low probability that you could play with only two Haunters. So playing with three is on the safe side, and you get three walls to play around with. So that's a bit more useful, and a bit more easy. We actually take out Maxi pretty well. Luckily, this Crobat didn't do too much to us, and it doesn't scare us that much. But, you know, Crobats are just insanely fast, you know. Luckily, luckily, there is no Crobat in any super super fights, like Elite Four member, some rival battle. They never stonewall us, so we're fine with that. And we also have Mariana in the back for Intimidate. Now comes the real kicker of the challenge. Here comes Liza and Tate, the double battle gym leader fight. First off, I'm going to catch a Whalmer. To evolve into a Whale Lord, so I got a massive HP buff from that thing. That thing has incredible HP, so we're gonna put it on our team just for bulk for walling. And now comes the issue of Lies and Tate themselves. Lies and Tate are obviously psychic types, and all my haunters are weak to psychic types, and they specialize in psychic types. So against Lies and Tate, I tried a bunch of different strategies. I started off with Haunter and then Mighty Anna, then switching out both Pokemon. It didn't work. Uh, I tried out just just trying to stall out one at a time still didn't work because I have three haunters so it's, it's uh, it just doesn't work I then I try to bring four haunters in I trained up one of the ghastlies in the back and it, that doesn't work at all because I don't have enough Pokemons for walling for sacking so the right middle ground is to start off the battle with haunter and a different Pokemon preferably Skarmory because then nothing's gonna target that thing then use curse on one of the Pokemons one of the Pokemons will attack Haunter, and then you switch into Mightyana, and then you switch the Skarmory out into Haunter, and then you could curse the next Pokemon, and then switch around again, and then most of their Pokemons will be gone by then. It's basically over once you get the curse off on the Luntone and the Soul Rock. Like the only thing the Luntone can do is Hypnosis use, just try to live the Flamethrowers, and they are down. And that's how we beat Lies and Tate. Just a bit of finessing, and we actually get Lies and Tate down. Oh, it's just so annoying in this game if you throw a pokeball and the trainer blocks it you still waste that pokeball so yeah <laughs> need that feature updated um in the super boss fight against maxi and tabitha with steven stone as your attack partner i brought one hunter and then just let the matang do all the work um i'm not using any other move besides curse i'm just switching around while the matang beats everything up Ain't my problem, must be a Matang problem. Nothing too important here, we just destroyed Archie real quick. And then to top of the city, do the Rayquaza thing, and then head into to top of the city's gym leader, which is Juan. Again, not a big fan, but we head into Juan, and we have two Warlords now, and a Skarmory, and we're pretty set up to just fight through Juan. 
we have three hunters so we can curse the first two since some of my hunters have odd hp stat they can live two curses so they can put up a third curse if needed and at the end it actually isn't really needed luckily um Juan just runs out of hyper potions at the end and we beat the king draw with a four hp skarmory at the end you know just clutch skarmory clutched it up it's all right now it's time to prepare for the elite four now i'm thinking what is needed i need intimidate for sure so the best intimidate pokemon in the game salamence second best is gyarados and i'm gyarados is easier to train up because you can find it and it doesn't start off disgustingly low level as a bagon it doesn't take forever to evolve here I, I forget the safari zone does not open up until you beat the game so i can't actually get shuckle i was baking on getting shuckle but now we got to rely on two Wailords and one gyarados and three haunters as our main attackers anyways i obviously had to train up a bit more for the elite four i uh, i knew that the current levels would not be good enough to sustain the battle Heading into the Elite Four, our first battle is against Sydney. Sydney is obviously a Dark Elite Four member, so he's going to be a bit tougher for our Haunters to fight against. Actually, the first two are really awful to fight against, but we do deal with him because we have Gyarados as Intimidator, and we can play around his unusual battling style, which he just doesn't want to use like moves against. I don't know why. My best play is that I'm switching in between Haunter and Gyarados, you know, to divert the needle arm at one point uh, i got i cut it pretty close because i was uh was trying to fight in front of an absol with a haunter and you know i got pretty scared uh it had rock slide you know it could have killed me at any point and i got a restart but luckily absol is kind of stupid just randomly sword stands and then we slowly whittle it down well we try to sack our haunter but haunter lives on one hp because of the nod because of because of the odd number of HP, it gets to live and it could put on, technically it could put on the third curse. So that is a great thing to have. We whittle down the Crawdon, get secure our first, our first Elite Four win. And now heading to Phoebe, Ghost time. Ghost? I, you would assume that Phoebe would try to hit me with more Ghost moves, but Phoebe's kind of trash. Phoebe be throwing out some weird shit and it ain't really good since this generation all ghost moves are physical gyarados is great right here because it can just switch in and just absorb hits so easily not to mention the the large whales in my back pocket that could just soak up hits because they have infinite hp is is working out pretty well and at the end phoebe kind of just threw she's she sent out sableye to do absolutely nothing just double teams and just lets my haunter live so i mean technically i could just if i if she had a full team she would have lost crazy Phoebe the ghost elite four member was the easiest elite four member anyway we're heading into Glacia the ice elite four member and she's a bit tougher all her Pokemon's are very bulky and just takes forever luckily for us we our team actually counters most of her Pokemon ice and water gets just absorbed by Waylord Waylord takes like four ice balls like eh, it's just a ridiculous not to mention her she has Glalie's Glalie is obviously not the best Pokemon I love Mega Glalie just not normal Glalie Glalie is just ah uh, just awful but but at the end it actually comes down to the wire I mean somehow it's harder than Phoebe it came down to my last two Waylords they both had combined about like 200 HP left it sounds like a lot but like I don't know it it, it was cutting it close if she had you know one more forward story it might have been very close that I would have lost but anyways heading to Drake Drake I assume would be a bit troublesome because he has dragon types and dragon types are pretty scary I mean I didn't even know this curse hits through protect so that's crazy to think but most of my Pokemon can actually wall out his team pretty well uh, just because firstly intimidate and then secondly just a lot of HP like I said earlier special special attacking Salamence because that's Dragon Claw it doesn't get boost up from dragon dance or anything so it can't really use its physical stats so it has to rely on special stat and you know whalers it can take dragon claws pretty well and the only pokemon that gave us trouble was his final pokemon which was which was the flygon flygon took care of a lot of pokemons mostly because they were weakened earlier but it took he went on a killing spree but luckily we clutched it up we closed out the battle and now we're heading into the champion fight the champion fight obviously is against Wallace and we have to focus a lot on this 
Firstly, his first Pokemon is a Waylord. However, the Waylord will always use Water Spell and kill one of my Hunters. So I'm already down one. Like I have to like now rely on so much luck to beat to beat Wallace because ugh, no matter what he will use Water Spell and I have to get the curse off. Luckily for me, Ludicolo misses the Leech Seed when I'm fighting it, so I can get my Haunter back. I could retreat it, and then when I beat the Ludicolo, I can send out my Haunter again and then use Curse again. And on luck, if Tentacle misses his Hydro Pump, we actually in the clear and we regain momentum, and we're in like the driver's seat. So Tentacle missing the Hydro Pump is very crucial to this, and then we play around obviously the Tentacle with his with his garbage moveset. Poison one of my Waylord, which is unfortunate, but it's got to be done. You know, sacrifices. My Lutic comes out, and I get to curse three Pokemon with one Haunter. So saved by the bell with that, and. Luckily for us, Haunter lives. My little tick gets battered down and it gets knocked out. It doesn't get knocked into red HP, which I thought it was, but comes Wishcash. Wishcash just amnesia. It lets me basically just get away with it. And I don't know what's wrong with that Wishcash, but it just let me get away with it. It could have beat my Haunter. It didn't, but it, it's goofy, goofy Pokemon. He also wastes his last full restores on it, so not, a, not, not too bad, honestly. This Wishcash is really throwing away stuff. Uh, it also used Hyper Beam, even though its attack was super lower. And that's Pokemon. That's Pokemon Gyarados. We're obviously going to be faster. We're level 60. And Curse Haunter, it uses Earthquake for no reason. Then uses Surf. The AI is crazy on this, but it doesn't matter. Eventually, we obviously stall it out. It uses Hyper Beam as a last ditch effort. We sent out Haunter, 1 HP Haunter. And that is it. We beat Wallace with only Curse. We beat the entire game with only Curse. Um, obviously, we had to use different Pokemon as Walls to get them up and to like obviously <laughs> get in the right position. But this challenge has been on my mind for such a long time, and I was like, oh, "Is this possible?" Because I, I have to finesse around so much. But we found out today it is possible. Oh, buddy! Um, I forgot the Steven fight. <laughs> uh, I was gonna get reamed in the comments if I forgot the Steven fight, but. We're back. Okay, we're back with the Steven fight. Uh, I just recorded it just now. Um, obviously, I did train up my Pokemon to a, you know a decently high level. You know, 60 was okay for the Elite Four. Steven's a different story. Steven's quite hard. I won't. I won't lie to you. Uh, it took me a few attempts. It took me actually benching one of my Wailers to find out that Skarmory is a bit better of a choice, and then we have to train that thing up. So. All three of our walls are very, very important in this fight. So we gotta keep as much HP on them as possible. So we get to use the Citrus Berry. I was actually editing this video and I was like, oh, I should have used the Citrus Berry. But now I got to use the Citrus Berry. <laughs> so put Citrus Berries on all my Pokemon. And then I put Haunter to lead, obviously. Lead Haunter into Skarmory. Skarmory will always use Spike, so that's a free curse off right there. And I get my HP back. So so I could use two more curses possibly and then I switch around Skarmory and Gyarados Gyarados to lower its attack stat and Skarmory to obviously it's a defensive wall it's gonna eat everything so easily for us we destroyed first Skarmory however the next few Pokemon are a bit tough next one's actually Claydol Claydol is a bit tougher Claydol doesn't choose to attack me right away which it could have just ruined the entire experience and the entire run right here if it chose to attack me with engine power that's what I have to worry about. I have to worry about not getting hit with my Haunter, just getting the Curse off and dipping. Luckily, Clado gets me the opportunity to use Curse and live on 30 HP. And I could also, you know, now switch out and keep this Haunter, use it as a third Cursor on the next Pokemon. And that's just very, very useful to keep up the momentum. And now we just switch between Gyarados and Skarmory. Unfortunately, Ancient Power is super effective on Gyarados. You know, maybe maybe if I could have more, if maybe if I choose to have a bit more time, I could have chose a different Intimidator. Maybe bring back Mariana, bring back someone else that's not weak to Rock types because all, every Pokemon on his team has Ancient Power. Gyarados has that flying immunity that avoids the spikes at the bottom. So it's very give and take. Uh, once we take down Claydol, next up is Aggron. Aggron packs a hard punch. It packs Thunder as a move. And every single one of my Pokemon that's a wall is weak to Thunder. Luckily, it actually has the worst accuracy in the world. So it misses like three or four of them. And eventually, it gets taken down. Not after weakening my Wailord to a significantly low HP. But I wasn't, getting, I wasn't really planning on using Wailord that much anyways. But it just it sucks to have like a lot of HP just drain away from a big wall like Waylord. 
Next up is Cradley. Cradley is grass and rock type, and I could play around with it pretty easily. Thing is, it's just sporadic. It doesn't use the right move ever because I, I send out my Warlord and I use Ancient Power on a switch into my Skarmory, so it does a lot of damage there, and it's just very, very annoying. Now heading into the last two Pokemon, Armado and Metagross. Firstly, Armado will always use Ancient Power on my Haunter, so that basically kills my Haunter. One of my Haunter has to be gone because of that, which is unfortunate. All the other Pokemon on his team probably have a chance of letting me live. Except Armado, Armado is guaranteed killed. Um, that's unfortunate, so Haunter is down. So we have one last Haunter, we can't really switch him in on any attacks. And then we sacrifice Waylord at the end. Just give it up, give it up to Waylord. Sorry buddy. It has to be done. And then finally his Metagross comes out and I have so I have so, so little HP on my Pokemons um, that it's kind of uh, uneasy to feel because I don't have like Metagross does not get intimidated weakened. Luckily he uses all his full restores so my Skarmory gets to come out and gets to live. It lives one hit guarantee and Metagross goes down and we actually beat Steven with this. Uh, it took a few tries I won't lie. Took a, took a few tries, took a benching of my Waylord, but we end up beating Steven Stone, and I, I, I'm adding this, I'm adding this in post uh, production, so luckily for that. So, anyways, back to the ending of the video. My favorite part of the video where I uh, get to talk to you guys. Anyways, thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. It means a lot to me that you guys stick around for this long. Um, if you guys can leave a like, comment down some challenge ideas, and subscribe, if you guys are new. Uh, means the world to me much appreciated thank you for 7k anyways my name is alpha hope you guys all had a great day i'm out peace